Uji is a relaxed half day trip less than half an hour from Kyoto that's slightly off the beaten path. It won't be as crowded as the central areas of the city. It's known for green tea and we'll be visiting Byodo In, the temple from the 10 yen coin, and a rabbit shrine. At the end, I'll tell you how to get there on the train. But first things first. Don't judge us, we're at Kogu Hari for breakfast again. It's a good breakfast. I've gone for my favourite vegetarian curry with vegetables and cheese and the smaller serving of rice and Phil's also got his favourite pork katsu with vegetables We've just arrived at Uji station and they've got a stamp at the station It's one of these big heavy duty ones like they had at Arashiyama Well, that's come out really well. It's Byodoin Temple. The woman on the stamp is Lady Murasaki, who wrote the tale of Genji in around the year 1000. It's considered to be the world's first novel. Welcome to Uji City. This must be their local mascot. They're carrying some green tea leaves. And is that one of those uh, things they used to swirl up the green tea on their head? It's a cha sen, a green tea whisk. Today we've come to Uji as a quick little day trip from Kyoto. It only takes about 20 or 30 minutes depending which train you get. Uji is best known for green tea. There's a lot of green tea fields around here. So I'm expecting to see lots of matcha snacks and loads of matcha ice cream. It's also known for Byodoin Temple, which is the big elaborate temple on the 10 yen coin. And that's also my calendar this year and my 2023 calendar, the page with the five Fireworks has my drawing of Yodo in. So today we get to see it for real. Not sure why this post box by the station looks like a big pot. <laughs> It's a green tea urn. Uji matcha is considered among the best in Japan because of the area's microclimate. If you want to visit the tea fields and factories, it's best to book a guided tour. Uji is also home to a Nintendo factory that's being turned into a museum. It was originally scheduled to open in March 2024, so it seems like it's been delayed. So look out for updates about that. It'll be in my Japan news, so make sure you're subscribed. They have special manhole covers here. You do see that quite often, celebrating what's local to the town. Byodoin and the river are just a short walk from the station. You can also walk to a museum about the tale of Genji and various temples and shrines. When you first arrive, Uji does look quite plain. It is a working city and the whole place isn't historic. If you want to come here, take the Byodoin exit from the station and then keep going until you hit the river, which is where we are now, and then we're going to turn right. Uji Bridge, one of the oldest bridges in Japan. It's been damaged again and again by wars, floods and earthquakes and restored several times. That seems to be true of so many buildings in Japan. They get destroyed and rebuilt. And here's our first view of the river. It looks a lot more picturesque the other side of the river. Oh, the water looks nice and cool. It's so warm today in the sun. As is often the case with major temples and shrines, there's a street running up to it with lots of snacks, souvenirs and restaurants. It's called Byodoin Omotesando and it's 300 metres long. I used to dismiss these sorts of places as being touristy and they are just for tourists, foreign and Japanese, but they're not necessarily tourist traps. You can find some good things, especially street food. This one in particular is known for green tea and matcha. Everything on the menu is green already. Right from the start I'm seeing so many green tea snacks and matcha ice cream. You're never more than 10 metres from a matcha ice cream in Kyoto, but here there's even matcha takoyaki, that's octopus in batter with matcha sauce, matcha gyoza, ramen with matcha noodles, and you can have extra matcha sprinkled on as a topping. I don't think there's anything here that doesn't contain green tea or matcha. Today's a Saturday about lunchtime and it's early March, so it's not busy cherry blossom season yet. And it is quite busy, there's quite a few people here, but it's not crazy it's not rammed it's a really warm day today the sun is so warm so i think people are out and about to enjoy the start of the springtime my drink of choice panta grape it's nice and cool from the vending machine the entrance to Byodo Inn is just at the end of the shopping street. For adults, it's 600 yen to get in. You can pay an extra 300 yen if you want to go inside the hall. We've just got the outside tickets. Here's my tickets. And they also give you a leaflet, which has a map on the back. They said you get the best views if you walk all the way around the lake. We just walked through a short bit of garden and straight away, here it is, the main view. Let's go around and have a look. 
it is a very beautiful building it's so detailed it's kind of strange seeing it in real life after i drew it from my calendar <laughs> I looked at every tiny bit of this building. This main building is known as Phoenix Hall because of its shape and the phoenixes on the roof. It's one of the few original wooden structures that survived over the years. It's never burned down or been destroyed, although it has been renovated, which is why it still looks so perfect. The fish trying to get something tasty on the bank. That's where we first came in. So if you pay the 300 yen extra for the ticket to go inside, you have to queue up there and then you can go across this bridge and into the hall. And that, that's the extra section you can look around. While we were there, it seemed like a nice location to take some photos with my Japan guidebook. If you want one, you can get it from cakeswithfaces.co.uk. It's good that it's not so crowded that everyone can get a good view of the temple. And over this other side, past the halfway point there's no one really over this part <laughs> so Byodoin is the temple you can see on the 10 yen coin and here it is in real life not only is this temple on the 10 yen coin it's also featured on the 10,000 yen note the phoenix on the note is from the roof of phoenix hall there's another Byodoin temple that looks just like this in hawaii i'm not sure why i'm gonna to have to look up why there's an identical one over there the other Byodoin temple is in oahu it was built in 1968 to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the first japanese immigrants arriving in hawaii it's actually scaled down to half the size of the original in contrast, the original Byodoin in Japan is over 950 years old. It's made entirely of wood without using any nails. Look at these guys up on the roof corner. There's so much detailing on the roof. We're following the route around and next is the museum, which is included in your ticket. Back there was a big queue of people queuing up for the temple stamp, which I think is the Goshuin, where you get a special stamp and some calligraphy that you can only get at this temple. They have them at most temples and you can go around collecting them if you want. Sorry, no pictures allowed in the museum and no sketching either. So inside the museum are various Buddhist artworks. There's paintings, screens and sculptures. It said they've renovated the temple so many times over the years. So I think everything that's in the museum must be the parts inside that they've replaced with new ones on the current building. My favorite parts were the old phoenixes, which are on top of the building, which is called Phoenix Hall. It said the building was originally a villa that was converted into a Buddhist temple in the year 1052. There's a sign saying, please do not ring the bell. Some people were definitely ringing the bell earlier, I heard it. Here's some plum blossoms that are out. It's early March, so we're before cherry blossom time, but I have spotted quite a few plum blossoms around. And there's the phoenixes on top of Phoenix Hall. These ones look a lot more shining and golden than the ones in the museum that were the old ones that were replaced by these. They're actually bigger than they look when they're up close. There's an audio guide for 480 yen. It's good that they do audio guides on your phone now instead of having to borrow a device and some headphones like you used to. In a way, visiting Byodoin reminds me of the Golden Temple King Kakuji. The main part is the view of the stunning temple. You walk in and there it is. Then you have a little walk around the gardens. Of course, here there's the museum as well so there's not a whole lot to do or walk around what you're there for is to enjoy this beautiful view and here we are back at the river we're going to cross over and look for ujigami shrine which is a rabbit shrine oh there's a pretty red bridge over that way as well this is a nice view with the rushing water and all the trees on the mountains somewhere around here they also do boat trips i can't see any boats at the moment though Here's the first rabbit. Let's go up. A nice bench sponsored by Coca-Cola. These are all the bad fortunes people have tied here to make them go away. Or you can tie your good fortunes here too. Here's all the Ema or Emma boards where people write their wishes. You can buy them at the uh, the shrine gift shop. It's probably got a better, better name than that. I like how these ones have a rabbit face and people have filled them in all differently. There was actually a lot of cute rabbit stuff and good luck charms in the shop. These ones are really cute. If I'm honest, I had hoped this temple would have more rabbits, but I did get this good luck amulet and I picked up a rabbit charm and Emma as presents for back home. If you like rabbits, Okazaki Shrine in Kyoto has more of them and there are many other fascinating animal shrines around Kyoto. This is a nice quiet lane going back to the river. It looks so clean. 
It's always interesting walking down these residential streets you don't normally see. We strolled back to the station and took the train back to Kyoto where we had a Shinkansen to catch. We just spotted a little exhibition in Kyoto Station just in the corner of the main concourse. Looks like they've got some uh, tapestries and historical artefacts. We got a bit lost in Kyoto Station, but completely by chance, that gave us an extra special surprise. It's Dr. Yellow! Is that really him or it? <laughs> yes, Dr. Yellow! Dr. Yellow is a special Shinkansen that's used to check the tracks, and if you see it, it's supposed to be good luck. In all the times I've been to Japan, this is the first time I've seen it. Everyone's excited. Amazing, that's so lucky I didn't think we'd see it. Bye bye, Dr. Yellow. Bye -bye. I can't believe we saw Dr. Yellow and we weren't even really supposed to be up here. We got lost trying to get to the other side of Kyoto Station. So my great good luck fortune from the restaurant last night came true. Here's how to get there. Uji is southwest of Kyoto on the way to Nara. It's actually the same train on the JR Nara line. It takes 20 minutes by rapid train or 30 minutes by local train, which just stops at more stations. It costs 240 yen each way. Once you're there, everything's walkable from the station. So that was Uji. It's a low key, relaxed place for a half day trip from Kyoto. You'll enjoy it if you like green tea and you can see the iconic Byodoin. There are more ideas for things to do in Kyoto in a playlist on my channel. And I'll see you next week on a Thursday with more Japan videos. Bye.